In October of 2011, uh, the Toronto Police Service Financial Crimes Unit Organized Crime Section conducted a criminal investigation dubbed Project Holiday. Uh, with the assistance of Canada Border Services Agency, uh, the United States Secret Service, and uh, multiple agencies across uh, the GTA, uh, it is, uh, we, we completed the investigation on February 16th. It's alleged that an organized crime group dedicated to the installation of ATM tamper devices uh, and the subsequent distribution and fraudulent use of credit card data uh, was uncovered. In this particular investigation, I have seen an increase in uh, organized crime groups that are involved in the ATM uh, machine tampering. They're from different ethnic backgrounds. They work uh, in groups as themselves. And recently in uh, Project Puma, it was one with Halton Regional Police. It was members from the Russian community and also from the Sri Lankan community. But the best thing that's been coming out of these investigations is I'm now seeing a larger cooperation with our GTA services and also with the OPP in doing these investigations. In this particular investigation, we had assistance from the Canadian Border um, Canadian Border Service Agency and also the Secret Service. And that's an important milestone for us in uh, investigating these type of crimes because these crimes are no longer strictly to geographical areas within uh, Toronto or the GTA. They've gone worldwide. Advanced technology has put us in this position and now we're working together effortly, effortlessly as the groups of police agencies and private security sectors to combat these issues. This project originated out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada and was dubbed Project Holiday. Seven people faced 357 charges. Police are requesting assistance in identifying 12 persons of interest in relation to this investigation. The investigation touched the Toronto and Greater Toronto Area, Europe, South Africa, United States of America, Bulgaria, Chile, South Africa, the Dominican Republic, Mexico, the Caribbean, Australia, and Indonesia. If you can identify any of these persons of interest, please contact the police in your area or anonymously submit a tip to Crime Stoppers worldwide. The Toronto Police Service Financial Crimes Unit and Crime Stoppers International are both using social media to reach communities to try and prevent victimizations of this fraud. Detective Ian Nickel will explain how this scam works. They targeted ATM locations in Toronto and throughout the GTA uh, and in fact uh, throughout Southern Ontario. The card data uh, obtained was trafficked to locations in Europe, South America, the USA, South Africa, and the Caribbean. And the cards were used at various ATM locations in those jurisdictions to perform cash withdrawals. The investigation revealed the existence of an organized crime, uh, an organized criminal group dedicated to the commission of the following offenses. The manufacture and international distribution of ATM tamper devices. The installation of ATM tamper devices throughout Ontario as well as the USA, Australia, and Indonesia the trafficking of credit card data across international boundaries, the fraudulent use of Canadian credit card data in Bulgaria, the USA, Chile, South Africa, Dominican Republic, and Mexico, the direction of individuals and groups involved in similar activities across international boundaries. It's estimated that the loss to Canadian financial institutions exceeds $360,000 with a total financial exposure exceeding $800,000. I, I would I would point out that uh, those are known losses. The, the actual losses are, in fact, probably much greater than that. Uh, and there's many losses that uh, have yet to be realized and will, will come out as the investigation continues. On December 14th of 2011, members of the Toronto Police Financial Crimes Unit executed search warrants at two Toronto homes uh, and, alleged, and uncovered a facility used to manufacture and distribute ATM tamper devices locally and across international boundaries. On February 16th of 2012, members of the Toronto Police Financial Crimes Unit, Durham Regional Police, Halton Regional Police, and the OPP Anti-Rackets Unit executed search warrants uh, across the GTA, uh, and the following persons are charged. Uh, Svil Marinov, 34 years of Toronto. Boyko Simeonov, 41 years of Toronto. Alexander Mihov, 28 years of Toronto. Asan Dutchev, 29 years of Toronto. They are charged with uh, participation in a criminal organization uh, and other offenses related to the fraudulent use and possession of credit card data. The following uh, others were lesser players 
also charged, but uh, not charged with participation in a criminal organization. Uh, Dimitar Rakov, 35 of Pickering. Dmitry Karelsky, 33 of Toronto. Daria Bosarova, 26 of Toronto. In total, uh, 33 counts of uh, possession of credit card forgery device uh, were laid on the main players in addition to make or repair credit card forgery device, fraudulent possession of credit card data, and possession of property obtained by crime. Uh, just a correction, actually. In, in total, there's 357 charges that uh, the accused are facing collectively. A warrant uh, in the first instance has been issued for Demo Bakalov of Toronto. He's 28 years. Uh, we're seeking the assistance of the public uh, in locating Dino, Dima Bakalov, who's uh, portrayed here to my right. In addition to uh, Mr. Bakalov, uh, there are several other individuals that, uh, whose photographs we have that have been associated to the installation of ATM tamper devices throughout Ontario. At the present time, their identities remain unknown, and we're seeking the assistance of the public uh, and the identification uh, of these individuals so that we might be able to apprehend them. Any questions at this time? The two Toronto homes, uh, one was in Scarborough and one's, one's in the downtown area of Toronto. Can you go into detail as to how the ATM machines were tampered with? Uh, there was uh, credit card reader devices, uh, and pinhole cameras were attached to the ATM uh, machines, uh, at which point they're left on for a couple of hours. A video is obtained in addition to card data obtained via the addition of a secondary card reader. Uh, the card data and the pinhole camera data are then uh, essentially mated to one another, and that information is used to, produ uh, to, to uh, produce counterfeit credit cards and debit cards. Uh, that information doesn't necessarily have to be physically transferred. It can all be done electronically. Uh, so at this stage of the game, we're not really sure if, if in fact, cards are made here and transferred to, to the other locations, or, or more probably, or more, more likely, they were trafficked uh, electronically to other, to other locations, and cards were produced at those locations. So you raided a lab, then that made these uh, There were two labs uh, in Toronto that were that were uh, uncovered on the 14th of December as a result of search warrants that were executed in relation to Project Holiday. Uh, the information that we uncovered as from those warrants and from other investigation uh, provided us with further information uh, leading to the, uh, the execution of search warrants across the GTA and the charging of the individuals that I've described. How many people do you think were affected by this case? Well, I, I can tell you off the, off the top of my head, just from one particular institution that I have information on now, there were over 1,500 uh, cardholders uh, compromised uh, as a result of, of this particular group. And, and again, those are the ones that I know about uh, there's, there's a lot that we have to do in terms of pouring over the data that's in our possession now. Uh, we'll have a better number in, in the coming uh, days and weeks. Well, the cards that were, that were compromised for the most part, uh, and I have to be very careful about how I say this, they were chip cards. Now, they were, but the, the means in which they were compromised, it, it couldn't be done in Canada, and that's part of the reason that the data had to be trafficked outside of Canada. Uh, the fact that the financial institutions have taken it upon themselves to, to add this new security feature has made the cards essentially ineffective in Canada for use. There are some holes in the system that allow for them to be used in other locations, uh, but having said that, if, uh, if it weren't for the chip technology that was used in the cards, the losses would have been substantially higher. Uh, the use of chip technology limits the available amounts uh, to the perpetrators, and it, uh, and it certainly limits their ability to be used uh, in, in North America and Europe. They were at automated teller machines, uh, both standalone machines and, and ones that at various financial institutions. Uh, uh, cer certainly dozens. Uh, and, and again, as we pour over the data that we have, uh, we'll be able to find out more locations that were compromised. Uh, but they, they were right across southern Ontario. Well, again, I have to be very careful here because the, there's no loss of, 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 fine, of, of money to the individuals uh, who held the accounts. The, the losses were assumed by the financial uh, institutions, and the amount of, of, of cash that was obtained uh, as a result 
was significantly lessened by the existence of tech to chip technology. As other countries come on board with the use of chip technology, this, this will not be allowed to happen. But there are some holes that are still left in the system that are being taken advantage of by the criminal element uh, that allow for it to be done in a, in a much smaller scale way uh, than was so in the past. If, if this same offense had occurred uh, five years ago, the, the losses would have been substantially higher. Well, the, the Secret Service maintains, uh, they maintain a liaison in, in the Toronto area for all offenses that uh, of a financial nature that cross uh, the Canada-U.S. border. So it's, it's, it's fairly typical for them to be involved in this sort of thing, mostly in a liaison uh, way and for, uh, for providing us with, uh, with links to U.S. investigators where in those jurisdictions that are affected. Is that good? I wouldn't say we're the, we're the world capital, but we, you know, we're next to a jurisdiction which, you know, back to your earlier questions about chip technology, they have not implemented chip technology in the States. So certainly with our high use of, of, uh, of debit card in Canada, uh, combined with the fact that our next door neighbour uh, does not employ chip technology, currently we may be a favourite uh, favorite target, as I say, because some of the data can be, you know, it can be used both ways. I mean, data can be obtained elsewhere and traffic back here. Uh, and until all countries come on board with the chip technology, uh, there is going to be a window of opportunity for the, for the criminal element to take advantage of that, and, and that's what's happening now. But I, I want to stress the chip technology is, is working, but it's, it's, it's a, you know, the, the process is not complete yet. I don't want to give any bad information about that. There's no indication whatsoever that the chip technology has, has been compromised whatsoever, because what's, what's happening is, without getting into too much of a technical discussion here, there's, there's chip data and there is, there's magnetic stripe data that's contained on the cards. The cards that have been compromised are so-called hybrid cards. The portion that has been compromised is the magnetic stripe, uh, not the chip technology. And all that's happening is, is until other countries come on board, uh, on occasion, some of those, uh, some of the data that's obtained via magnetic stripe uh, can be can be utilized in countries that, that have not utilized chip technology completely yet. So. Well, I, I think it's it's a worldwide problem. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not unique to here, and I guess the, the difficulty is, is that somebody going and using a, a credit or a debit card at an ATM, uh, even if it's a counterfeit card, it, it doesn't trigger any alarms or look unusual. You can be standing right behind the person that's using it. So I, I would assume that other countries are doing the exact same thing that we are, and it very well may, may be that some of the data, well, in fact, some of the data from other countries is being used up here. Uh, you know, it's, it's happening all, all over the world. You can, you can look uh, in any number of countries they're all having the same problems that we are. Uh, maybe because of our uh, extreme usage of debit cards, we're more prone to it, but certainly it's a worldwide problem and every police agency is addressing it. Are there some victims that had no clue that their information was being used by people in the country? Well, typically what will happen is, is a victim will be notified by their financial institution that, that their card has been, uh, has been utilized uh, fraudulently before they're even aware of, of, any, uh, of any difficulties. Uh, the financial institutions will typically notice certain patterns via their own software driven processes and, and they'll notify their customers that their card has been, uh, has been essentially delisted and provide them with a new one. So uh, at no time was any, any consumer uh, suffering a financial loss, although certainly uh, an inconvenience and, and nobody likes to, to find out that their card has been compromised. It leads to all kinds of problems and I, I'm sure that many had their, their plans altered as a result of this. Pretty much all in, within Canada, all the, the major financial institutions have been impacted by this uh, as, as they continue to be. And in addition to that, uh, much of the data that was, uh, that was seized uh, during the execution of the search warrants in Toronto uh, indicated to us that, uh, that locations were being compromised elsewhere. Uh, specifically, we have data that was compromised uh, from what we were able to tell from an Australian bank based on the nature of the card data that was on it. Uh, at this point, we don't know the specific locations. I can tell you that many other locations within those countries, Australia and Indonesia in particular, uh, were targeted 
and Chile was a favorite destination for the, for the use of Canadian card data. Well, it's called holiday because the, the destinations uh, where, the, where the Canadian card data was being used, which is what initially alerted us to this, this problem, uh, were mostly, uh, mostly holiday destinations, the, the Caribbean, uh, Dominican Republic in particular, Mexico, uh, Chile. So we just dubbed the project holiday for that reason. Uh, well, I know some of the some of our players uh, in this investigation have a, a previous history in Australia, from where they uh, from where they were actually previously convicted there. Uh, it stands to reason that Indonesia, being relatively close to Australia, there may just be a connection there. Uh, we're still exploring that. I can't I can't tell you why Indonesia specifically was targeted, other than its proximity to Australia. Is there any well, that, 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 that can be the case in many of our investigations. Uh, most of the accused in this matter are, are naturally naturalized Canadians. Uh, many of them are of, of Bulgarian heritage, but not all of them. Okay, thank you very much. This information is already on our website, including the photos of those persons of interest uh, to be identified.